Derek pulled out his CA20. Yay. We just we just did that now while the camera was charging. I don't think anyone's seen how Zells? smoky it was. Oh, no, <laughs> I put it in the video, remember? There was like a clip of it just like shooting smoke out the back. <laughs> Nothing came out. And then we took it drifting and it got far worse. There's oil in the intake. <laughs> There's oil there too. Yeah, oil in the Belchazing. What did you buy to go in it? Should we look at it? Outside? I picked it up, but um, I didn't. I didn't buy it. My oh, okay. brother bought it. This thing you may remember. I'm doing some cool shit with it. Mm -hmm. It'll be uh, pretty good. Have you shown in the engine bay and shit? Are you in the engine bay, Randy? Or are you under the car? <laughs> there he is. It looks so nice and neat. Just don't look down here. It doesn't run. Yes, it does. Well. It runs well. Yeah, it runs good now. I yeah. thought you said that there were problems and you wanted nah. you wanted my SR20. Everything's fixed. Oh, NSR20, get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> it's got some sneaky headers under there. Oh, really? Yeah. You put the shield nice. on because, like, technically... It's actually technically, it's better to have the shield anyway. Yeah. But having headers in Australia is a restricted vehicle for p platers. Yeah. Which means you're better off just driving around with a turbo. Anyway, what we're saying... Randy bought another one of these, and it's red. It's over the fence. I don't want to like show people where you live, maybe. <laughs> but anyway, he bought another Exa. It's red, had a CA in it. He stripped it for the bits that he wants. Which was like, because this has got quite a bit of hail damage, which I damage think we on explained in that, old, and the guards. in that old video, eh? And then don't pinch the motor from it. What are you doing with the motor? Right. Let's go have a look. So that's the CA, stripped down. Ooh. Did you... Machine the block at all? Or nah, not gonna not, bother. Not bothering that. I'm doing like a very basic rebuild. Okay. Just slap some piston rings in it. Hone the bores. New rings, new bearings. Oh yeah, the photo that Derek sent me of the bearings weren't that bad, but oh. this guy. <laughs> yeah. The photos that he sent me are still on the floor. Oh. Yeah, they had some the scoring. Pretty, they had some pretty good ring ridges. This engine has done 480,000 Ks, and I believe it. By the ring ridges, it was pretty bad. Is that what it's called? What it has like the scoring from the rings? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it that makes was a like, bit of a ridge. It was like all in the. I could probably put up the photo. Yeah. Even though it's a really bad quality photo. Yeah. Are they new pistons or secondhand pistons? No, just pistons? the same pistons, which I probably should have changed them because there was so much gunk in them. Mm -hmm. But should be right. I just wanted to do the most basic rebuild on this, which also means kind of not the most basic rebuild. Because the reason the engine wasn't running and it was just because of this. This valve wasn't sealing. Pulled it out, cleaned it off, lapped the valve, put it back in, and it seals. So, what's lapping the valve? Basically, you. Oh, you can kind of look. I don't know if you can see. Oh, yeah, look at the um. Look at so look at the original. Yeah, look at and how like gunk and stuff. patchy and shit it is. So it's not. It's not a flat surface at you all. You put grinding paste in here. I don't have the thing on me, but you basically put grinding paste on this surface. Put it on there, spin it around, bump it up and down. Okay, so it makes the it just, makes the two mating surfaces the same. Yeah, matches them up. But I don't think that was actually the issue. I think the issue was probably related to the EGR on this engine, which you can see that's full blocked with carbon. Oh, what? But I think that actually built up on the valve. Is that actually plug. like stuff? Yeah, there's a plug that goes in there. It has a hole in it. Oh, whoa. Only the front wheel drive engines have these, but that's completely blocked. There's a passage that goes from here all the way in the exhaust valve. And that's just totally blocked it's up. It's fully blocked with soot. I'll, I'll probably just leave it, honestly. <laughs> but I think that built up on the bottom of the piston, um, the valve. If you look at some of the intake valves. Whoa! <laughs> look at the crap on that. That's kind of what that last exhaust valve was like. Yeah. So I think it wasn't actually allowing, it was getting stuck in the valve stem. It wasn't actually Allowing it to travel shutting. fully? Yeah. So it's not just the seating problem, so that it was blocked from shutting fully. Yeah, because it Dude, was just fine. not shut fully. So that it, it had no compression on cylinder four, luckily. Uh, one funny thing with these CAs, they got eight ports, but they have like injector in just one, oh, on just four ports. So if you look, there's a clean port and a fucking manky port. Yeah, so it shows, it shows how much the actual fuel cleans the intake. Yeah, that's why modern cars, you really need to do intake cleaner stuff because because uh, it gets dirty. This one, and this is the same thing with the valve. This one has oh. an injector on it. I have not cleaned this one, or that one. Holy shit. 
That's why injective versus no injective. Yeah, pretty much. That's why modern engines with direct injection is kind of... So that's one benefit then to the... Um, to the, uh, to the four port. That's one thing I like about Toyota's with their cold start. They have a cold start injector in the plenum. So that just kind of washes everything. Just washes everything. Nice. Some of these heads came four port though, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. In so they would have just, that's that's a benefit that they would have in Europe then. In the UK, there was just one big four port. So it's kind of, I guess you can compare it for the uh, the small port and the big port four age. Oh yeah. I think they're kind of the same thing, but instead of having the, the, the secondary butterflies is called T-Viz, I think, the Toyota. I'm basically gonna shave as much as I can off of here and see what happens. So that's what's going on with that. Yeah. Solder. <laughs> Soldering. Why don't they pronounce the L? I'm concentrating really hard, all right? I'm keen, at, I'm keen as to show you guys my new daily. Derek thinks it's dumb. Oh, it's kind of cool. It's kind of cool, but it is dumb. I don't see. So more, more, um, more, SR20 garbage. Yeah. It had a few questionable modifications to it mm -hmm. that either weren't modifications, being that it was sort of like just tacky stuck on fake carbon fiber things, or it was uh, kind of cool modifications, but not done particularly well. <laughs> just laughing. <laughs> like the strut brace. Yeah, I mean, strut braces are good, except for the fact that you said that apparently it makes it too stiff and the T-tops it Pardon. twists the car. It transfers the uh, the flex from the strut tops to yeah, the so actual body. In this, yeah, in this car, if you were to have strut braces front and back, instead of the towers flexing, uh, you kind of have the entire car flex through the center. Yeah. And it like twists it like a pizza twist from Baker's Delight. It's the same thing with, um, people are learning a bit more now, but when people go like full tube front and then crash it, it ends up tweaking the frame because when you make something stronger, it just it's just going to bend the, everywhere else where it's takes weaker. The force to the next weakest spot. Well, it's like the guy that we saw at Wilby. He had these like bolt-in uh, yeah. front fender braces, which do you know make the whole front end a lot more rigid. But then because of that, when he went it. when he went face first into a bunker, a dirt-filled yeah. concrete bunker, it sent ripples down the side of the car further back. That's the kind of stuff that yeah you, you, isn't ideal. Bracing mm. things more isn't necessarily a good thing. Oh, dude, that turbo isn't in line with all of that. Yeah, I know, I think it's- Derek, what are you doing? Trying to make it work. <laughs> so you had a dead ECU. Shit, yeah, it was broken. No. Nothing? Yeah. Hey, you're right. ignited. Goodbye. Goodbye. This guy. Just taking all of his car. <laughs> So Randy, what did these guys started doing? Started tearing my car apart. So just as Randy's getting all this together, the roadworthy, these guys come along. They're like good looking ECU yeah. you've got there. An igniter, yeah. An igniter. Because yeah. that's two signals. Wouldn't it be nice if I just took them? Give me an upside down message. Feel like the cam angle sensor wires might be backwards. Someone write down these codes. <laughs> uh, oh, 21 was. 21 is ignition signal. 11. Crank angle sensor. And 13. Uh, just the coolant, tem coolant temperature sensor. So the two things that you suspected it was. Yeah. Well, and I, I knew the coolant temperature sensor was not working. Yeah, nice. Because we haven't we haven't wired that in yet. Fix them up and maybe it start. Hopefully. <laughs> what did you do wrong? Uh, nothing. Everything right. You did the wires the wrong way around? No, no. I did them the right way around. It's just for some reason between the XR and this car, they are the other way, way around. <laughs> <laughs> this rag that I used for your rag bag had a receipt in it. And the receipt is from Old Branch Avenue, 7-Eleven, Clinton, MD. In Ma Maryland? Ma Maryland? Maryland. Yeah. Maryland? Is that how you say it? I think that is, yeah. In the US, the, the bag of rags that you guys have are from Maryland. So if you're from there, you got your pants. And you bought Doritos Clear Ranch. Clear Ranch? <laughs> cool Ranch, I don't know man. I saw I saw CLR. Trying to work out grounds. Trying to make them more tidy. This wire is like a bit short. Yeah, it's probably better. Is it reaching too far? There. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> bang. Oh my God, that is tight. Ah, bit of double hand action. So the big, the big cartel is gone completely. Big cut, big, big kick, kick. The kick, kick. The big cartel is gone, uh, but all the stickers are now up on a different website that I've made called Easy Rider. Easy Rider is what I've renamed all the photo blogs on Facebook and Instagram. 
um, because it's all about having an easy ride. It's just, just relaxed, working on cars, hanging out with mates, taking photos. She's an easy rider. Get a hold of you. I don't know the words. Where are you? Where are you? Easy. No, it's easy lover. Oh, okay. I don't know that song. Never mind. So I've renamed it, and I like easy riders. The first wheel I bought, and my favorite wheel. And this is my favorite wheel. You got them on everything, dude. Well, two cars. Exactly. I love everything. It. I'm gonna get uh, some meshies off a of Tinder boy tomorrow. <laughs> a Tinder boy? No, Timber, Tinder Tom. Tinder Tom? Yeah. Cause, oh, because of the video. Because of one, yeah. Because that one clip that we showed of Tom on Tinder in Willby. So he's Tinder Tom. He's Tinder Tom. And get some Aussie mesh rims for my Aussie Japanese what car. What are they? Are they Bridgestones? No, they're Delta. They're pretty small, but that's fine. This car needs small wheels. It needs small wheels. It's got these 16s. I like them, but they're too big. They're too big. It doesn't help with the handling at all. Nah, because it has like no power. It'll have a little bit more power now, but yeah. still nah. <laughs> still not a lot. Anyway, the site has moved across to easyrider.ltd. That's the only domain name I could get. They're on there. Yeah. It's also got a photo blog, which I will be posting up on every now and then. I take a lot of photos and I take a big series of photos from times I've hung out with mates, just randomly here and there. So I thought that'd be a good opportunity to do a small blog post about like, you know, hangout sessions in the past. In the future. And future. That sticker is the actual product photo on the website. I noticed. But uh, the code 2020 is 40% off all stickers. I've already run out of stock of three different designs and then that one's got one left. And then the blue one, does Derek have the blue one? Fellas Network Oval. He has it on the Ranger. With a blue outline on the, on, the, on, the on the Ranger. Yeah, there's only like five of those left. The blue was popular. I chose it. The blue was super popular. As soon as I got it, I realized everyone else had the blue and I was like, I still like it. Though. It was <laughs> hidden under there. Yeah, and then everything was joined together and then just taped together. So it was all shorted to each other. That could explain some of your problems. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he was testing my ECU with those wires. How good are my headers? I like them. How good is a dollar fifty worldwide shipping? Yeah. Pretty fucking good. <laughs> 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 this guy, hi, this guy.